You can remember them from your childhood. Bugs Bunny, Donald Duck, Disney's Robin Hood, all these walking and talking animals that are so human-like that you start treating them like humans. These characters are anthropomorphic. They're basically animals with their bodies modified to resemble humans, both in their way of moving and in their general behavior. Today we call them fairies or anthros, and they are a very popular subject among artists. If you want to learn how to draw fairies, you came to the right place. My name is Monika Zagrobelna, and this is how to draw fairies, aka anthropomorphic characters, on Envato Tats Plus. In this video, I'll show you the general rules of how to draw fairy characters, what you need to learn before you design your persona, how to keep your characters proportional and consistent, and how to draw fairies in a simplified yet realistic style. Just keep in mind that this is just an introduction to this topic, a general overview of the problems that you will stumble upon when trying to draw a fairy. To anthropomorphize means simply to make something human-like. It can be done in various ways. A tree can be said to think and speak while keeping its normal tree look, but it can also have arms and hands made of branches and a fully expressive face curved in the trunk. In the case of animals, they can be made by pedo and wear human clothes, and their faces can be changed to show human emotions. There are many levels of anthropomorphism. You can make something more and more human-like by progressively adding more human characteristics to it. This process allows you to create a variety of interesting characters that can act like humans without looking like them. The term furry refers both to anthropomorphic animals and to people who love this concept. It's a very broad term because your sympathy towards the fandom can be expressed in many ways. You may simply like reading comics starring anthro animals, draw them, or role play as an anthro animal with your friends. You can create a detailed design of your persona, your imagined animal self, and become this character by wearing a special suit. You can even attend special fairy conventions where fairies can interact with people who share the same interests. Antro characters are easier to draw than realistic humans, but easier doesn't mean easy. You still need to know something about drawing humans, because antro animals are human-like animals. So let's see what you need to know to draw good antro characters. Humans are the only truly bipedal mammals, walking on two legs as a normal way of locomotion. Therefore, simply making an animal stand on two legs makes it automatically look human-like. You can also simply attach an animal head to a human body. However, you lose many opportunities for an interesting design this way, because while it technically can be called an anthro, it doesn't look plausible, which kills the immersion. To create a realistic furry character, one that people could believe in, you need to look into the anatomy of both humans and animals. Once you get to know it, you'll be able to create convincing designs, anthros that look as if they could really exist. Even simple, purely cartoon characters have their anatomy simplified, not guessed, and this makes a difference. If you look at humans as a whole, they look relatively similar. Some taller, some shorter, some skinnier, some fatter, but these differences are not really striking. Cartoon artists exaggerate these tiny differences to tell us more about a character, and the same should be done with anthros. You can achieve this by using a simplified body rhythm. What is the very first thing you see when looking at the character? How would you describe its silhouette if you could only use the terms of simple shapes? Always start your sketch from this, and you can be sure that your character will send a consistent message about its body shape. If your character is typically cartoon, make sure to repeat the rhythm throughout its entire body, for example, elongated torso, elongated head, long fingers and feet. If you go for realism, this is not necessary, but still make sure that your character has one base rhythm in its whole body. Every animal has its own body proportions. Anthros combine the proportions of humans and animals, but they're still not random. Proportions come mostly from the skeleton the length of the bones, and the position of the joints between them. You can learn the proportions of the bones by analyzing the skeletons of both humans and the animal that you want to use. The internet is full of great references for this, especially if the animal is one of the common ones. To analyze the proportions, gather a set of various references. The more different views, the better. Sketch the skeletons in a simple way, trying to find a recipe you can memorize. 
Later, combine both sets of proportions into one, focusing on the functionality as well as the look. Animal legs look the way they look not because this is cute, but because they are optimal for quadrupedal motion. Similarly, the uncommon structure of human legs comes directly from their function, creating an upright position and allowing for bipedal movement. A bipedal foxman, therefore, can't just be a fox standing on its hind legs. They must be modified to look more human-like. And that's just one of many things you need to consider when creating a body structure for your fairy. After you have your proportions, you can add the actual body mass to them. Again, this subject is best learned by analyzing the anatomy of real animals and humans. You don't need to go as far as to memorize the name of every muscle and ligament. All you need is the form they make. So search for diagrams of muscles and sketch them, trying to simplify the forms into something easy to memorize and reproduce. But muscles aren't everything when it comes to the shape of the body. We have the fat and fur as well. This you need to study separately to understand how they change the shape created by the muscles. You can learn it by sketching real animals with their muscles only, using a photo reference and then adding the other elements. You also need to remember that photos don't show you the whole picture. You can learn more from videos and even more from observing the real animals. Take your sketchbook to the zoo. Finally, when your character has a full, roughly sketched body, you can start adding details to it. Does it have hands or paws? What do its feet look like? What does it wear? What clothes? What jewelry? This is the most fun part about designing the character, but there still should be nothing random about it. Even the details should be functional. Don't just draw a bracelet on every empty area of the skin. Try to become this character for a while and see what you would wear and how if you were them. You might have heard of a phenomenon called the Uncanny Valley. Generally, the more realistic the face, the more we like it, until it gets almost real but not quite. This little lack of realism is much more unsettling than stylization because we see clearly all the face isn't. You can use this information to keep your anthros real enough, stylized in a convincing way, but far enough from the uncanny valley to avoid comparing it to the real thing. Simplification can let you drag the attention to what really matters in your design. Make the feet flat, exaggerate the muscles, make the eyes huge and expressive as in manga characters, and you'll make it clear that it's not realistic because it's not supposed to be, not because you didn't know how to do it. Simplification removes the unnecessary elements and exaggerates the important ones, but you need to do it consistently to create a convincing image. For example, a nose made from a simple shape without the nose holes will look good only if the rest of the face doesn't have too many details. Otherwise, the lack will be visible and unsettling for the viewer. Real anatomy is not easy to learn and remember, and simplification can save you from it. People will see a leg even if it doesn't have a perfectly shaped knee. It just needs a joint in a certain place and some mass around two bones. But this is something you need to go to yourself. Learn the real anatomy and then remove the redundant parts step by step. Remember, guessing has nothing to do with simplification, Stylization is purposeful, not random. Humans have a lot of tiny muscles in their faces used specifically for creating various facial expressions. We can also recognize the smallest change in them to interpret the mood of the other person. Animals have a repertoire of facial expressions suitable for their species, but they're not nearly as expressive as us. In their communication, the rest of the body is more important. Because of this, simply attaching an animal head to your anthro's body will make it quite hard to treat the creature as a person. We need moving eyebrows, flexible lips, visible whites of the eyes to convey the messages written in the language of a human facial expressions. In other words, a head of a fairy should resemble a human face in everything that is crucial for showing emotions. But fairies are also part animals and they can have additional means of conveying emotions. For example, most mammals show their mood by moving their ears, and a reptile can use its tongue for something more than tasting the air. Experiment with it to see how you can make these additional motions a part of understandable facial expressions. Although we have so many emotions and so many ways to show them, in the end they can be simplified into a few groups. Look into a mirror and try to show these basic emotions. Joy, sadness, surprise, anger, disgust. See how easy it is? Sure, these are acted facial expressions, 
and we look different when the emotions come naturally, but you don't need this kind of realism for your intro character. You don't really need to learn this, just make the same face you're trying to draw and you'll see you already know what to do. A well-designed character looks the same every time. You don't just recognize it by species, color and clothing, but also by the body proportions and the face. That's why it's good to create a reference sheet for your character where you will show it in various views and with various facial expressions or in different clothing or no clothing. A reference sheet lets you see the character as a whole, not as one drawing. You can use such a sheet to draw the character consistently later or to show it to other artists so that they are able to create art or a fursuit of this character faithfully. While anthropomorphic characters have been popularized by children's book and movies, they are certainly not limited to them. Half humans, half animals can combine the best of both worlds giving the artist full control over the character without submitting to the stiff rules of realism. They're also so diverse that everyone can create a personalized, unique character to express their own personality in a way not possible in the human reality. Are you a fairy? What is your persona? What do you like the most about anthro characters? And if you are not a fairy, what are your thoughts on the fandom or anthro animals in general? I'd love to hear what you think, so feel free to leave a comment. This was Monika Zagrobelna for Envato Tatsplas. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe.